Hi, I'm Mrs. Sabo. I teach elementary orchestra. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to unpack your instrument. So right here, I have a violin or a viola case. They pretty much look the same. Um, and there's a couple different types. This type is the type you would see with a lot of the rental instruments. So if you're renting your violin or viola, chances are it will look a lot like this. So when you unpack your instrument, you always want to unpack it on the floor. Step one to unpacking, once you've got it on the floor, is to undo these latches. So you're just going to flick this bottom part of the latch up, and then the bottom, the top will drop down. Then you can lift the lid. Let's take a look inside of the case. Inside the case, you will probably find a sponge. A sponge for a violin or viola is just like a cushion that will pad your shoulder so that way it's not so uncomfortable when you're putting the instrument on your shoulder to first learn to hold it. Um, you can set that aside for right now so you don't need that just yet. Um, and then you've got the actual instrument. So here's my violin or my viola. And up top we have our bow up here. I'll leave the bow alone for right now, but let me just show you. The violin or viola just rests in there. Often you will find, or I will tell you to put, a rubber band on your instrument to help hold the sponge. You can just leave that rubber band on there for right now. And you can see there's just like a little compartment here for it that you can gently and safely put it in. Notice the top of the instrument always faces up and the back always rests on its backside against the bottom of the case. When you unpack it, it's important that you unpack it by lifting up the lid. You never wanna open it with the instrument face down because it could fall out and it's putting pressure on the strings. We always want it on its back. Okay. In your compartments, like this compartment right here, you will probably find something called a rosin. So let me open this up. You can see right here, I have a rosin. Rosin is something that you're going to use for your bow. It helps to make the bow sticky. The rosin itself is hard, but when you rub it on the bow, it comes off in like a powder-like substance and it makes it so that the bow grips to the string so that it can pull it and make a sound, making it vibrate. If you were to drop this rosin, you can see mine's kind of a little bit shattered. It's got some cracks in it, but if you were to drop this rosin, it would shatter kind of the way uh, a Jolly Rancher or any type of hard candy would shatter and break. So you never wanna drop this rosin. You always wanna make sure you're taking good care of it. Best is to put it right back in its pouch where it belongs so that way it does not break. Up top, we have our bow here. To open our bow, there's just like a little latch right here that you slide down. Some cases have a flip latch where you just have to twist it and then you can lift the bow out. Notice this end of my bow with a little white dot on it, which is called the frog, is on the right hand side of the case. So I'm just gonna pull that part out. I'm gonna pull the frog forward and I'm gonna slide the tip out from behind the wall. This part right here is called the tip. Again, this part slides behind a wall. It's because the tip of the bow is very fragile and can break. So we always wanna put that behind the wall of the case to protect it. So this is the bow. We want to make sure to take good care of the bow. You never want to touch the hair of the bow. There's two parts to the bow here that are the main parts. You have the stick of the bow, the brown part, and then the hair of the bow, which is the white part. So this is what the bow looks like. And when it's put away, you usually want the hair relaxed. So right now you can see the hair of my bow is relaxed. It's a little bit loose and it's almost touching the wood of the bow. If I were to tighten the bow to use it, I would need to turn this screw at the bottom of the bow to the right clockwise about three or four times all the way around. One, two, three, four. Now you can see my bow. The hair is a little bit tighter off the bow, off the wood of the bow. It's so tight that I can just about fit my thumb through the middle and have a little bit of space without it touching. The trick to tightening your bow though is that you never want the bow hair so tight that it's pulling the stick to be completely straight. You always want a slight curve inward towards the hair with your bow. If it looks like a bow and arrow where it's curved out in an outward arch the stick, that's too tight and you want to loosen it. Otherwise you can damage your bow. A common thing that will happen is the frog will sometimes crack here or your hair can just pop off your bow from the top up here. So, and that's usually something that's going to pretty much ruin the bow. So you wanna take good care of your bow by not over tightening it. Also, when you're done playing each time, you're always going to loosen the hair of your bow. 
To loosen the hair, you just go the opposite way with the screw. You'll turn it to the left to loosen it. And the same thing, you want to turn it about three times, four times, so that the hair is back to its original position where it's almost touching the stick of the bow. When you have the hair of the bow tightened, it's almost like the hair is playing tug of war. Now, you might want to play tug of war for a couple minutes or maybe on field day you play tug of war, but you wouldn't want to do it all year long or all day and all night long. You want to have a chance to relax and recharge. The same thing is kind of true for the hair of your bow. It needs a chance to relax before you play it again when you're not using it. So anytime you are not using your bow, you want to loosen it and let the hair relax and then put it away in its case safely where you will not accidentally break it, step on it, anything like that. So your instrument always needs to go in its case so that way it does not get damaged. And then I can latch it in place so that it doesn't fall out when I go to close it. That just holds it up so that way it doesn't fall. Now, notice on my instrument case I'm using here, it's slightly curved on the top. That part is the top part. So when you unpack, make sure you find the part that is slightly curved. And usually I'll have the label on it over here. That's the side that is the top of the case. The latches and the handle should be facing you. When you open it, you don't want to open it backwards. Some cases are a little bit different though. There are other cases, for example, like this one, that have a zipper instead of the latches. If you have a zipper case, you would just undo these zippers that are up front, take it around to the back. Same thing on this side, unzip it, take that zipper around to the back. And then some of them have like a squeeze latch, like mine has right here. I'm just gonna squeeze this on either side and then it opens up my case. So that's another type of case you might see. Again, make sure the top of the case is up. A lot of times cases will have a carrier or little feet on the bottom of the case. Make sure the bottom of your case, again, is down for violins and violas. All right, let me take you over to a cello case now. A cello or bass case is going to look something like this. It's got a zipper on it, it rests on its side, and the string part is up front. To take out the bow of this case, the bow rests in this front pouch that's got a long sleeve in it. To unpack, you really want to take out the bow first, so that way you don't break it. So I'm just going to slide this bow out. Notice the tip was in first. The frog is what I'm holding it by. So I slid that bow out. I can tighten it a little bit, just like I did for the violin, about four turns. Can fit my thumb through the middle. Still got that nice curve I'm looking for. And my bow is tight now, so if I wanted to play with it, I could. I'm going to put my bow safely aside, though. So you could put this on a table or somewhere that's safe that you're not going to accidentally step on it or that another family member or a pet might get to it. You want to put it somewhere safe. In one of these pouches here, you'll have a rosin. You can unzip that and you'll use that for your bow eventually. But we're not going to be using the bow just yet. And to open the case itself and get the instrument out, I'm going to pull the zipper should be on the top part of the case and then I can just slide the cello out like this again to put my bow away I'm going to loosen it by turning the screw to the left to loosen it and you can see it's relaxed enough now that the hair is a little bit closer to the stick. And I'm going to slide it back in the sleeve here. And I'm going to put the tip in first. So that way it's nice and protected. The frog end is what I'll hold it by. So that way that's what I'm reaching for when I'm sliding it out. And then I'm just going to do the Velcro up. And my instrument's all packed up again.